Hi folks and a very happy new year to you. What you see in the vice is a fly called the Terry Perry Cormorant and I'm going to tell you all about it and how to tie it in this upcoming video. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vice then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a medium wire and it's finished in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is Nano Silk. It's from Semplify. As you can see, it's black. It's at 50D or 12 watt, if you like. And as always with the Nano Silks, I'm going to get a spot of super glue onto the shank of the hook. Now, this just helps the Nano Silk adhere to the, the shank much better than wax can do, as it is quite slippy. So I'm just attaching my thread to the shank and I'm going to get a bed of thread all the way down the shank of the hook. Now I'm not overly worried about uh, neatness at this point. Now I'm always being sent pictures of flies for people asking to have tutorials done on the channel. But this fly was sent to me by Graham Lynch who won the Champion of Champions in Scotland last year and uh, he was using this fly to do the damage uh, and as soon as I seen the picture I could see why so I've decided to do the tutorial as the first one of the year so thanks very much Graham for being kind enough to share the pattern uh, competition anglers can be a little bit thrifty with uh, passing out successful patterns but Graham's kindly allowed me to do a tutorial on this one so, I've got my bed of silk on, and the first thing I want to do is add in a gold tag. And I'm using some uh, dual tinsel here, so what that means is it's gold on one side and silver on the other. Now, I've already got a little piece off here, and what I want to do is I want to tie the gold onto the shank of the hook. So, I'll just get that started. Again, it doesn't need to be overly tidy. I'm going to come back just to beyond where a barb would be in a barbed hook and then I can come back up and what I'm going to do is try and make this as neat as possible for about five millimeters. Now the tag won't be that long but it's always nice to have the option of uh, shortening or lengthening the tag. So if I make it quite neat up to this point I can then come in with my thread, make sure I've got that trapped over, and I'll just catch that in. Now I'm going to take away my excess material, and the next thing I want to do is bring my tine silk all the way up to the thorax area of a normal fly, and I'm going to cast my thread off at this point. And once I've taken that away, I'm going to bring in some Glow Bright Floss. This is number three. As you can see, it's red. And I want to catch that in just in the thorax area there. I'm going to bring it down using my rat's tail, try and keep this a little bit neater than the silk. Don't need to be overly worried, but just um, so that this is going to be an underbody if you like, and uh, I'm using red because that's what the recipe asks for. Now, the overbody is some Textream, I think it's called Magic Tinsel. It comes in two widths. There's um, 132 and 116. So I'm going to use the thinner of the two, which is the 132, and I've already taken some out of the packet. Now, you might have seen me use this in the past. Um, you can pull it and stretch it and get all kinds of uh, nice effects with this material. It's a great ribbon material and it can be a really good body material. It's quite robust, so it doesn't need any protection. And there's a shiny side and a dull side. I'm tying the shiny side down towards the shank of the hook. And I'm just getting it into place. And I'm going to come back with my red floss. And at this point I can determine how long 
I want my tag. And just having a look at that, it's about two and a half millimeters, and I think that's going to do me. Now, the beauty of floss is if I spin it, my bobbin holder to the left, it flattens out the floss, and I can maintain a nice thin body. I want to try and keep it nice and even. Uh, if it does start to twist up and tighten up again, I can just give it another little twist anti-clockwise and bring that all the way up to the thorax area. I'll just tuck that out of the way. Then I can come in again with my whip finish tool. Or you can just put a half hitch in this if you like. And cast off my red floss. Now I go on a bit, uh, well I go on a lot, but uh, I do go on a bit about the materials we have underneath when we're bringing over a rib or a, a pearl lurex, it does make a difference. Next I'm back on the nano silk, I'm going to catch in just behind the eye of the hook and I'm going to get several turns onto this. I can take away my rat's tail and then I'm going to get extra turns in and I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise. Get a few more. Now, the reason uh, I want to use the rotary function is I, I don't want to pull this tight. I want to get a nice, even rib. And when I say even, I want it in touch and turns to create that segmented appearance that you've seen when we started out. So the Champion of Champions is a competition that takes place on the Lake of Menteith each year and it's a highly contested prize amongst the Scottish anglers. I'm just bringing this up to the head all the way up and then once I've brought it up to my tine silk I can come over the top make sure you catch this into place before you let go because if you let go and it's not in properly you might find yourself starting again with the turns so I'm coming now and take away my excess. Just drop that on the bench. And that's looking pretty good. Now if you were a belts and braces guy, you could bring a, a small layer of Solaris bone dry or uh, varnish up and put that to the side to dry or, or whatever you want to do. But it is a robust material, so I'm going to crack straight on with a fly. Now it's called the Terry Perry Cormorant because it's a like a cartoon monster if you like, uh, I've seen a picture and it's the legs that give it its name, the TP Cormy. So I've got some uh, pre-tied black legs here, I'm going to just rip them off the stock, I'm going to invert my vise and then just dress it back and I want the, le the knotted sections to come kinda up to where the gold tag is. Now give me the length of my legs. Now I've got two or three turns in just to hold it into place and then I can use my dubbing needle just to get the legs where I want them. They're not quite right. Forgive my fingers at the moment. The plain hardball, but I've got it now. Just splitting them between the shank there. And I'm fairly happy that they're going to sit right now. I can then remove the waist, like so, and bring my vise back to normal. Next thing I want to do then is tie in my wing. Now I'm using some uh, candy floss. This is the Black Jack Marabou. I've already got a little bit out the packet. Uh, as you can see, 
it's a nice jet black colour and what I want to take is about a thumbnail's worth of fibres so I'll rip them off the stock I don't like my cormorants to have too heavy a wing uh, it's just a personal preference I'm sure if you've got a heavier wing they work just as well but I like to have a nice thin wing on my cormies I'm just going to damp my fingers down pull out any little bits and bobs so that I've got a nice straight cut to tie in now before I tie in the marabou I'm going to add a little bit of wax to my nano silk just to help me grip the material now I only want to get two or three turns onto this like so I've got a lot more turns to come and I've still got a few materials to catch in so I know that's in place I'm going to leave the tail long as it is at the moment and the next thing I want to add is the two gold runners that run up the side now I haven't got plain uh, gold so what I'm using is some of this holographic uh, it's I can show you the label but I dare say you get it from any hobby craft sort of shop a similar sort of thing it costs about a pound and it lasts you a lifetime out I've certainly had this a lot of years so I'm going to catch in the gold runner probably just longer than the shank of the hook I've got a couple of turns on my side and then I'm going to bring it round the front and get a couple of turns on your side I'm not going to go mad with the turns and then I'm going to come in and get it approximately the same length as my side just cut that a little short just trim mine up so it's more or less equal okay so so far so good I'll just damp that down so I can uh, keep it all nice and tidy the next thing then is I'm going to add jungle cock eyes now I've actually already prepared a jungle cock eye and uh, what I've done is stripped away all the guard feathers as you can see here and I've split it with a needle now on the original pattern that Graham sent me this was two separate eyes now I'm too tight for that I'm just using the one and saving myself some feathers I don't think it makes much difference uh, but it, it's entirely up to you if you've got jungle cock to spare please feel free to strip out two of the smaller eyes and use that now I've just not quite got as much waste there as I could have done with my scissors so I'll just take away as much as possible and now what I want to do is concentrate on building my head now what I want to also ensure is that I've not got any of that yellow showing through the head now Again, this is uh, one of the benefits of nano silk. I can use lots of turns to create a nice, neat head. Now, I'm just going to bring my vise around to make sure that, as I mentioned before, I've got that jungle cock eye covered up. I want it to flash out of the sides, not in the head itself. Then I can come in with my whip finish tool. Like so. And at this point, thumb and forefinger in at the marabou. And I can just trim that up. Just use my thumb and forefinger on my left hand, damp down to pull everything back. And you can finish this with varnish, super glue, whatever your poison is. I'm going to be using, as always, well not as always, but I use this a lot when I want an instant 
finish on my fly. Uh, once you've done this part with a cormorant, there's no waiting, drying or treatment. You finish off the head and it can go straight in the fly box. Just find my UV torch. Now, if you've enjoyed this cormorant, why don't you check out the cormorant on the screen now, which is a competition special. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.